So let's now look at sulfur 6 oxide. So this is the other oxide of sulfur apart from sulfur 4 oxide. So we also have sulfur 6 oxide. So sulfur 6 ox oxide is basically formed when sulfur 4 oxide is reacted with excess oxygen in the presence of a suitable catalyst. As you can look at this experiment, we have sulfur 4 oxide which is being reacted with oxygen and then you'll notice that the sulfur 4 oxide first of all enters the Kong sulfuric acid and also the oxygen first of all enters the Kong sulfuric acid before they are now reacted in the presence of platinized asbestos catalyst. So why is it that these gases first of all are being passed through Kong sulfuric acid? So previously we said that if you see in chemistry, any gas first of all is being passed through Kong sulfuric acid, it will mean that the Kong sulfuric acid is going to remove traces of water vapor from that gas. So since we have sulfur oxide being passed through Kong sulfuric acid, it will mean that water vapor is being removed. Or rather, the Kong sulfuric acid is acting as a dehydrating agent to remove the excess water vapor found embedded inside the sulfur oxide. So as well with uh, the oxygen, Kong sulfuric acid is removed, is used to dehydrate or to remove water vapor from the oxygen's atmosphere. So the gas which is now being reacted uh, in the presence of platinized asbestos is pure sulfur oxide and pure oxygen gas. So this catalyst, which is the platinized asbestos catalyst, is used to speed up the rate of reaction by, by which sulfur oxide is going to react with oxygen. So the asbestos is just going to speed up the rate at which the sulfur oxide is going to react with oxygen molecules. And then after that, we'll see that sulfur 6 oxide is being collected under a very cold environment in order to enable the sulfur oxide to be able to condense and cool to form a liquid sulfur 4 oxide. So as well in the experiment, we can see that we have calcium chloride. So the function of the calcium chloride is just to prevent moisture from entering the experiment from the other side. That's the function of the calcium chloride. It's just to prevent moisture from entering and interfering with the experiment. So for the sulfur 6 oxide, we see that the sulfur 6 oxide solidifies under cool temperatures and is collected as solid crystals. And that's why we have sulfur oxide being collected under very extreme temperatures. So this is the reaction whereby the sulfur oxide is reacting with oxygen to get uh, sulfur 6 oxide in the presence of the platinized catalyst, as you can see. So um, the first method of preparing sulfur 6 oxide uh, is that one, the one that we can be able to react sulfur 6 oxide with oxygen. So that is the first method of preparing sulfur 6. We can react sulfur oxide with oxygen in the presence of a suitable catalyst to get sulfur 6 oxide. So there's another method of preparing sulfur 6 oxide also in the laboratory, whereby this other method we are going to decompose sodium hydrogen sulfate. So if we decompose sodium hydrogen sulfate, we are going to get sodium sulfate plus water plus sulfur 6 oxide gas. So that is what we are going, uh, we eventually going to get. So if we decompose sodium hydrogen sulfate in the presence of it, we're going to get sodium sulfate plus water plus sulfur 6 oxide gas. So this is also another method by which we can be able to prepare sulfur 6 oxide in the lab. So the first one, remember, we're reacting directly sulfur 4 oxide plus oxygen in order to get sulfur 6 in the presence of a catalyst. Uh, whereas this other method is dehydrating or decomposing sodium hydrogen sulfate in the presence of heat to get sodium sulfate water molecules plus sulfur 6 oxide uh, in gaseous form. So apart from that, let's now look at testing for sulfate ions. So how can we be able to test for sulfate ions? Like for example, you have been given, um, you have been given a solid in the laboratory or a sample in the laboratory, then you have been asked, test for sulfate ions in this uh, solid. So how are you going to test for sulfate ions? These are not nitrates. So we went through the nitrate, we see it will form a brown gas, will be formed an acidic gas, that is nitrate. Now this is sulfate. So how can we be able to test for sulfate ions in the laboratory? In the laboratory, just know this, if you have been given, if you see something barium, barium something, let it always hit in your minds that there might be tests for sulfate ions because barium, ions are basically, they are mostly used in the testing of sulfate ions. 
barium. So in the laboratory, if you see you have been given sample barium something, always know that there might be a test for sulfate ions. So you see that in this experiment, uh, you can be given a sample. We can use a sulfate or a sulfite ion. So in this experiment, let's use sodium sulfate or sodium sulfite in order to be able to know that if you are, if you are using a sulfate, this is what you are going to get. If you are using a sulfite, this is what you are going to get. So remember for the sulfates, we have the sulfates and the sulfite. SO4 for sulfate, SO3 for sulfites. And all of them we are going to use barium to test if these are sulfate ions or, or if these are sulfite ions. So the heading of our experiment will be testing for sulfate or sulfite ions. Then apart from the heading, we have the apparatus. We list the apparatus that you're going to use. You're going to use, uh, obviously, test tubes. We're going to use sulfates. We're going to use sulfites. We're going to use measuring cylinder and barium chloride. So after the apparatus, we go to the procedure, which must be written in past tense. So for the procedure, we'll say that we added two centimeters cubed of sodium sulfate in a clean test tube followed by two centimeters cubed of barium chloride. Then the next part of the procedure then will say that then two centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid was added and finally observations made or taken. So for this procedure, I've used the sulfate ions. Don't mix the procedures. So for this procedure, we'll say we added two centimeters cubed of the sodium sulfate in a clean test tube followed by two centimeters cubed of barium chloride. Then we added two centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid and made observations. For the sulfite, I'll just say everything the same, but I'll now use sulfite. We'll say then added two centimeters cubed of uh, sodium sulfite in a clean test tube followed by two centimeters cubed of barium chloride. After that, two centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid were added and later observations made. If you have been given a sample, an unknown sample in an exam, because that is what mostly exam does, they give you an unknown sample, solid X, liquid X. So you'll say like this, we added, uh, let's say it's a liquid, so you'll say we added two centimeters cubed of sample X in a clean test tube followed by two centimeters cubed of barium chloride. Then after that, two centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid were added and observations made. So that is if you have been given an unknown sample labeled X or any letter. So you'll just use that letter uh, in the presence of the sodium sulfate, sodium sulfate. So after writing the procedure, we go now to the observations. So what did we observe in the experiment? So we'll say that when barium chloride was added to the sodium sulfate, or the sodium sulfide, those are the two test tubes. When barium chloride was added to the sodium sulfate and the sodium sulfide test tube, a white precipitate was formed. So the two test tubes, this one has the sodium sulfate, this has the sodium sulfate, uh, the sodium sulfite. So if we took the one which had, had the sodium sulfate, we add two centimeters cubed of barium chloride. And then we take this other one having the sodium sulfite, we add two centimeters cubed of barium chloride. If we look at them, both of them will have a white precipitate. So both of them had white precipitate as soon as barium chloride was added. So that is the first observation, uh, the first observations we made. Then the second observation, remember in the procedure we say that we added hydrochloric acid. So we must make that observation. So the next step in the observation will say that when dilute hydrochloric acid was added to the test tube having barium sulfate, nothing happened. So the white precipitate remained or persisted or did not dissolve. When uh, hydrochloric acid was added to the test tube, which had barium sulfite, uh, not barium sulfite, which had sodium sulfite, the white precipitate immediately dissolved. So I hope you have understood those procedures. So the procedures happen like this. So we took a clean test tube. One test tube, we, add barium, uh, we added sodium. So in one test tube, we added sodium sulfate. In another test tube, we added sodium sulfate. So the next procedure, these two test tubes, one te uh, the one test tube of sodium sulfate, we added hydrochloric acid and made observation. For sodium sulfate, we added hydrochloric acid also, we made observations. So what happened is that this test tube which had sodium sulfate, the white precipitate persisted. Yani I could dissolve really back. The white precipitate persisted. But this one which had barium sulfite, the white precipitate dissolved. 
So those are the two ways by which you can be able to differentiate between sulfate ions and sulfite ions. So in this experiment, we'll see that when dilute hydrochloric acid is added to the precipitate, which contains barium sulfite, the precipitate dissolves immediately. But when dilute hydrochloric acid will be added, AMA was added, to the test tube which had barium sulfate, the white precipitate remains as per this equation. So these are the equations which will be formed. So the sulfite is BaSO3, the sulfate is BaSO4. So like after all that, we'll see that when dilute hydrochloric acid is added to the white precipitate, the sulfite precipitate will dissolve in the dilute hydrochloric acid to form barium chloride, sulfur oxide, and water molecules. So these ions, so the ions that will be formed will now be able to determine if a white precipitate, yes, will be formed or a white precipitate, no, will not be formed. So the formation of the white precipitate with barium is a test for the sulfate and the sulfite ions in chemistry. And that's why I've told you, Anytime in an exam you'll see that you have been given barium ions or barium something in an exam, always let it hit your minds that there might be test for sulfate or sulfite ions. So how are you going to be able to know that these are sulfate ions? So sulfate ions, they will not be able to dissolve in an acidic medium. So for example, if you use hydrochloric acid like the experiment or you use nitric acid, so the sulfate ions will not be able to dissolve, but sulfite ions will be able to dissolve. So the white precipitate of sulfite ions will dissolve in an acidic medium. The white precipitate of sulfate ions will not dissolve in an acidic medium. So that is it. So the white precipitate of sulfate ions will not dissolve in an acidic medium, while the white precipitate of sulfite ions will dissolve in an acidic medium to form a colorless solution. So that is how you can be able to test or differentiate between sulfate ions and sulfite ions in the laboratory.